Three Demons, Book One, The New Demons, Chapter Two. New Day, New Life, New Me. I walked to school by myself, as I always did. Well, not technically by myself anymore. I have two other alters in my head with me, and I can now hear everything they are saying. I've been chatting with them, and people around me have just been staring at me since it does look like I'm just talking to myself. I get to school and I look up and see someone from a second story window through a club room of the uh, regular high school staring at me. A woman with light skin, lime green eyes, round glasses, a buxom figure with long brunette brown hair that reaches down to her thighs with fangs that go down to the left side of her face similar to mine. From what I've heard, her name is Rhea Gabrielle. She's the student body president of both schools. That's a woman, all right. A huge fucking rack, Jake says in my subconscious. I sigh, ignoring what Jake had said, and pretend that Rhea was not looking at me, or that she was looking at someone else. So, Rhea, what do you think of him? Ava asks Rhea. Rhea sits down on the clubroom couch. I'm not sure. There is absolutely something about him. He'll be an excellent servant, but I doubt he'll be any more than that. Ava smiles at Rhea. It was quite unusual for you to resurrect him after his encounter with Rikiji. I mean, you've never given him any time of the day since the start of the school year, Ava tells Rhea. Rhea just looks down at her mug of tea, getting up from the couch and heading to the clubroom shower, not responding to what Ava had just said. After the school day, I go on my way home from school. As I walk the trail home, I begin to get an uneasy feeling come over me. I know I've been in this situation before. Once you've experienced death, you'll never forget the feeling, Jake tells me. I turn around and see a man wearing a trench coat walking towards me. Damn, I thought Rikiji had taken care of you. Listen, kid, I do feel bad about this, but orders are orders, the man tells me as he pulls a gu out a gun on me. What the? Alter switched to Joseph. Come on, you piece of shit, fallen angel. I'm gonna love to have your blood on my hands. Joseph says with a wicked smile on his face. The man smirks. Rikiji mentioned you were insane, but I didn't think it would be this interesting to see. Joseph runs towards the man as he gets shot in the shoulder. Stupid dumbass, did you forget he had a gun? Jake asks Joseph. Joseph tells him to shut up and he runs at him again. You're gonna get shot again! Jake yells. The man shoots Joseph in the knee, leaving him unable to move. You really are persistent, aren't you, boy? The man says, looking at us, pointing the gun to our head. Damn it, we're gonna freaking die again! Before the man can pull the trigger on us, a portal opens in front of us as Rhea and Ava step out of it. I'm in shock. I have no idea what's going on. Ritsuka, I would like it if you didn't meaninglessly attack my servant, Rhea told the fallen angel with a smirk on her face. Ritsuka smirks back at her. Many apologies. I had no idea he was a part of your company. Though, fair warning, I can't say other fallen angels will be as lax as I am in this situation, Ritsuka warns Rhea. Rhea chuckles softly. Well, I guess I'll have to show them what it means when you mess with the Gabrielle company. All three of us are confused. Did the brunette just call us a servant? Joseph says out loud. Rhea looks down at us and smiles after that comment. I woke up in my bed the next morning as myself. Last night, Rhea told me she would be sending someone to get me after the second period to explain to me what's going on in my life now. However, as I'm walking to school, I notice Rhea standing by the school entrance waiting for me. About time you shut up, she says with a giggle. I don't bat an eye and just continue to walk forward with her by my side. Apparently, this is a big deal because I hear people freaking out about me hanging out with Rhea, who is the student body president. I am an outcast, so I guess that would explain everyone's shock. We get to the intersection that divides the alternative school and the regular school between, between us. I'll have someone fetch you after second period. Rhea tells me, walking towards her school. After second period, a handsome boy who looks like he should be from the other school, blonde hair, hazel brown eyes, wearing a black jacket, white button-up shirt, and black pants. His name is Kazuto Hagisawa. He walks up to me. You're Randy Cardona, correct? I just look at him, saying all of the girls in my classroom drench their pants in liquid just by his presence alone. I sigh. Yeah, that's me. Rhea sent you, right? Kazuto nods. I get up and walk with him to the other school's campus grounds. I walk into the club room where I meet everyone. First thing I notice is that there is a shower in the club room for some odd reason. Alter switched to Jake. Oh my god, there's a shower in here. That's so fucking hot. Jake squeals. Perv. 
says a petite girl with silver short hair and blue eyes, with two short bangs over her forehead. Her name is Kitsune Hina. Alter switched to Randy. I look around and see Ava, as I hear the voice of Rhea coming from the shower room. Rhea eventually comes out of the shower. So I assume you're wondering what's going on, correct? Rhea asks me. I nod. You see, Randy, we are demons, she says with a wicked smile. This news shocks me. Alter switched to Joseph. Wait, so I'm a demon now? So fucking cool. Ava smiles at me. We've got a very excited one here, Rhea. Rhea smiles at us. When Rikiji killed you, I brought you back to life, but as a demon. But this day forward, you will be my servant. Joseph looks at her. Why the fuck? Joseph did not like the sound of being told he was someone else's servant. Rhea giggles. You seem confused, Randy. Joseph fires back. Sorry, not used to a hot chick telling me I'm a bottom in a weird BDSM relationship. Rhea and the rest of the group didn't know how to respond. Kazuto places his hand on Joseph's shoulder. No, Randy, that's not what she meant. Joseph is puzzled by this. Then what did she mean? Rhea sighed. You see, uh, the upper tier demons are allowed to create what's called companies in hell, where we increase our numbers in the current war against angels, fallen angels, and the occult. We've lost many of our elites. There aren't many left. Joseph nods, clearly not paying attention. Ava interrupts this introduction. Rhea, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm getting a wind of some of the occult roaming around in our territory. Rhea smiles and gets up. Well, I guess it's time to go. Come on, Randy. It's time to show you how capable my company is and how much more so it is with you. We arrive to an old abandoned building where everyone is seemingly in a serious mood. We all walk in and the area is dark, only lit by the moonlight peering through the broken windows. Coming from the shadows come six large beings, seven feet tall, slender, bony body with a large ribcage seeping through its pale skin. The being had no eyes but a mouth with multiple rows of sharp teeth. Sorrows, Kazuto exclaims. Joseph looks at him. What kind of name is that? I think Slender Shark would be better. Ava giggles at Joseph's joke. Rhea speaks to everyone. Randy, stay close to me and watch us fight until your abilities awaken. Kitsune. Kitsune nods and walks towards one of the Sorrows. It charges towards her, unleashing a huge roar in the process. Kitsune stands there with the sucker in her mouth. She ducks under the Sorrow as it tries to grab her, and she rams her fist and arm through its body. She pulls her arm out, and blood starts pouring out like a fire hose. God, that was so hot, Joseph thinks to himself. In the subconscious, I just look at Joseph. What the fuck is wrong with you? Joseph turns back to me. You can't tell me that wasn't super attractive. Joseph realizes the Soro is running towards him. Before I could reach him, Kazuto unleashes his blade and cuts the being's head clean off. Randy, you need to stop zoning out. You might end up dead, he says with a smile on his face. Rhea looks over to Ava which Ava nods in reply, and walks towards three of the beings, lifting her hand up in the air with a smile on her face. Suddenly, a giant strike of lightning comes out of nowhere and eviscerates them. Not even Ash is left behind. Joseph is in awe of the sheer power of the group. Joseph turns around and sees one of the Soros about to grab Rhea. Joseph runs up, gauntlets starting to form around his fists. He punches the being in the face, the result having the being's face turned to slime, melting off its skull. Joseph then punches it in the abdomen, causing a giant explosion of guts, bones, and blood pouring out of its back. Joseph smirks. That was so fucking awesome. Rhea is in awe, but she smirks and thanks Joseph. The next morning, I woke up in my bed as myself. I begin to think back to last night. Hey Joseph, what were those gauntlets you were wearing? I ask him. I'm not sure, but they have the ability to melt down my enemies' bodies and it's cool as hell. Joseph responds. It seems these abilities Rhea was telling us about have taken form, Jake speculates. I closed my eyes and imagined and tried to remember what the gauntlets looked like when Joseph used them in an attempt to use them myself. Alas, nothing came out of it. I sighed and got up and got ready for school. I'm sure Rhea has something for me to do. On my way to school, I notice a brown-haired girl trip over what seemed like thin air. I turn and notice her skirt has lifted up showing her panties. Alter switched to Jake. Now this is a view I can get used to, Jake said with a creepy smile. The brown-haired girl turned over and looked at Jake with a blush on her face. Jake shakes his head to get his exposure, or my dumbass could help her up. Jake helps the girl to her feet. Her, young, her appearance was young, about my age, five foot one in height, slender body with a small chest, her brown hair flowing all the way down her neck, with bangs splitting over her forehead. Jake is looking 
at her with a blush on his face. Hello? The woman asks to break Jake's gaze on her. Jake shakes his head to gather his composure once more. Sorry about that. So, I assume you're new in town, right? Jake asks with a smile on his face. Why, yes. I've actually been transferred here from Argentina to be the mother for the church here in town, the girl says with an innocent smile on her face. My name is Oscar Ayoi. I'm a nun for the church, Oscar greets us as Jake admires her beauty. Would you like an escort to the church? I mean, it does seem like it's your first time here, Jake offers, offers her. Oscar nods, and she and Jake walk towards the church. As they got closer, Jake continuously gets a cold chill down his back and an eerie feeling coming from the church. A bead of sweat began dropping from his forehead. Oscar turned back to us. Is everything all right? She asked Jake. Yeah, just got a little bit lightheaded. Jake responded with a dumb smile on his face. Nearby, we heard a child crying near us. We turned and saw a child sitting on the ground and crying. Jake and Oscar got close to him, and Jake saw something on his leg. A giant gash from his knee all the way down to his ankle. What happened here? Was it the occult? A fallen angel? Jake thought to himself as he looked over, and his eyes widened as Oscar was in shock seeing this, tears falling from her eyes. You poor boy, being attacked by those wretched creatures. Let me heal you. Oscar tells the boy as her hands begin to glow as she hovers over the boy's wound. Jake was in awe seeing the gash disappearing as if it was never there. Once the wound was healed, the boy got up and hugged Oscar gracefully, thanking her. As the boy left, Jake looked at Oscar. How did you learn to heal people? Jake asked. Os Jake asked. Oscar blushed in embarrassment. I was born like that. She responded, clearly hiding something. Jake didn't bother with it, however. It seemed personal. Jake and Oscar part ways as the presence of the church continuously made Jake weaker and made his made him lose his breath a lot more until he had to part ways, using school as an excuse. Thank you. All three of you are so sweet. I hope we all meet again soon. Oscar thanked us without us realizing what she had said at first. After a little while, Jake stopped walking and turned back, thinking to himself, Did she say all three of us? End of chapter 2